just gonna stand here and maybe be a bit quiet for today see if anybody is gonna come and approach me and talk with me There's a lot of wasp here. <laughs> you believe in God, you believe in Jesus. Where will your soul spend eternity? Heaven or hell, we're all gonna die one day. And so when we die, we are ready to face Jesus on our day of judgment. It's a bit windy today, eh, Father? In my water. to the street so people can see on both sides problem I could show you something that's bigger than that yeah. 
Praise the Lord. Another beautiful day. Come to Christ. He's the only way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. Guys, you know where you're gonna end up? I'm good. Till you die? I think so. <laughs> you believe in Jesus? You're gonna meet him one day. I could show you something bigger than that. You wanna know who is? That's God. And he also created that pumpkin. Yeah, more people are more interested in the big pumpkin, big pumpkin than Jesus Christ. Come to Christ, ride with Christ, walk with Christ. He's our Savior. He died on the cross for you and for me. Oh boy, I'm messing up things here. Believe in Jesus. Come to Jesus. Read the Bible. I could show you something that's bigger than that pumpkin. I could introduce you one and the one who created that. Yeah. Thank you. God created Dad, that. And mom come. God created that pumpkin. And he's a lot bigger than that. Well, I can introduce you who created that pumpkin, <laughs> and he's a lot bigger than that. Uh -oh. <laughs> the one, our creator, that created you and me and died on the cross for us so we can be saved from our sins. That's the one we should admire and glorify. Exactly. Take pictures. If only we could see him. We will one day. Maybe sooner than we think. Are we ready? That's the question. Are we ready? Are we ready to face Jesus? Not too many people are. Believe in Jesus. The Bible says that God does not desire that any person share parishes. God wants that every person comes to repentance. He wants to restore every person that he has created.
there is no limit in what Jesus can do. Anything that you may have lived in the past, any sin that you may might have done, anything that you think that God will not accept you, that is not true. Jesus Christ's forgiveness has no limit. He loves people and he wants everybody to come to him and he will not reject any person from any faith for any original for any nationality he is impartial and he is ready to welcome you to save you to clean you up the joy of meeting jesus christ is not something that you can compare with anything when we meet jesus christ the first day we do that we start looking at the world and suddenly everything else seems to be pointless because now we know god and god has revealed himself and there is joy knowing that everything is under control under his full control god wants to give you his mercy to his people that is the purpose of creation and he has allowed all these things to happen for so that people choose to come to him so that people will respond to his calling when he comes and he worship you our conscience god is looking to help us to save us and to grant us mercy so that we become his children for anybody who accepts jesus christ who receives the holy spirit he becomes adopted children of God. He passed from condemnation to eternal life. Here and now, whatever you think you have is nothing. You will lose everything. And if you have Jesus Christ, and if you have the Holy Spirit, you are a child of God. There is nothing to fear anymore. There is nothing to crave anymore because you have everything the value is in eternity your value is in Christ nothing else in the world will matter to you anymore because you have eternal life you have God with you two people who believe in Jesus and believe in Jesus is not only to believe and have, have, have in your mind but it is also to know him to have a true relationship with him and to follow him every day he is there he guides the sheep by the holy spirit you can't always come closer and closer to jesus christ and know him and when we do that and we will be a hundred percent sure about of our faith if we walk in the power of the holy spirit the power of the holy spirit will help us overcome sin and iniquity and many things of this life without the holy spirit we will not be able to overcome but if we have god with us if we have the power of the holy spirit we will overcome sin we will not even desire to walk like we used to walk before me we met him there are many things that I used to do before I met Jesus, but after I truly knew him, after I understood what he's all about, after I understood his essence, his sacrifice, his true love, then I couldn't do these things anymore. Even though I can sometimes be tempted to do wrong, I am not able to do wrong because I know that he is there. This is how strong true faith is. And this is what having a full assurance of faith is. There is no limited limit to him. We can always increase our faith. We need to spend time with God and seek God so that we strengthen our faith more and more in Jesus Christ. If we have Jesus, we have everything. And if we don't have Jesus, whether we have in this world will be worth absolutely nothing when we get to the end.
the Bible says in Hebrews 9 27 as it is appointed unto man once to die but after this the judgment to inherit the kingdom of God you must be born again that means you must receive a new heart in Jesus that God takes up the heart of a stone that lives in rebellion in anarchy towards him and it gives you a new heart that obeys him loves him and worship him the Bible says in 2nd Corinthians 5 to 17 therefore if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation all things have passed away behold all things have become new in 1st John 1 5 to 10 this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in the darkness we lie and do not practice the truth but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses from all sins if we say that we have no sin and we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and his words are not in us only Jesus can save you he will be reconciled to God today the Bible declares there's only one one God and one mediator between God and man the man Christ Jesus who gave himself a ransom through us all to be test to testify in due time Jesus says that he is the light of the world if any man comes to Jesus <clears throat> we're no longer walk in darkness but they will have the light of life Jesus says that he is the bread and water of life he comes compares himself to food because without food and water we cannot live without food and water spiritually spiritually we cannot su survive we will die Jesus is the bread of life and the water if you do not eat of the bread of life or drink of the water of life you shall die in your sin but Jesus came to save sinners believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved oh come to Christ today friends receive forgiveness of sins in Jesus Christ receive salvation in Jesus Christ repent of your sin and believe in the gospel the Bible says in Romans chapter 6 23 well the wage of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord Jesus came in to save the sinners Jesus Christ came as the son of God he knew no sin but he became sin for for us so that through him we may have righteousness of God you need righteousness and there is nothing you can do and do about it to attain that you must clean cling to Christ you must trust in Jesus Christ and surrender of all of what you have the Lord to the Lord Jesus Christ the Bible says in your salvation under there's no other name under man <coughs> under man whereby by you must be saved that means that he is above every name king above everything of kings read the Bible you can know God by reading the Bible in Isaiah 55 6 and 7 seek the Lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man is taught let him let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him 
and to our God for he will abundantly pardon the Word of God declares in John chapter 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall, shall not per have perished but have everlasting life but God does not send his, his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe in him is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and man loved darkness rather than light and light because their deeds are evil for everyone practice e evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in god trust in jesus and to be saved from your sin jesus says i am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me in christ we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin according to the righteousness of his grace the bible says that god is risen christ god bless you sir and reconcile the world into himself jesus paid the penalty of our sin that the christ he bore the wrath of god he bore the righteous in condemnation and pure and in holy justice of god for our sins and so now by faith alone jesus christ can you become reconciled to the living god oh friends come to jesus christ and repent of your sins and be saved he is seeking please seek him before he seeks you with flaming fire and take vengeance those who know not god and be punished for everlasting destruction that is what the end will be for you if you deny your only help today that is jesus christ he is the Savior. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. The King of Kings. The Bible says, as many has received in him, for them he gave the more to become the sons of God. Even to them, even to them who believe on his name and become his son and daughter of God. The Bible says, you are his creation until you come to salvation until the spirit of god draws you to salvation you receive it you take up the cross and follow jesus christ today who will deliver from the wrath of god who will deliver you and <laughs> death and destruction only jesus christ can the bible says the soul that sins shall surely die do you not understand about this if you continue in sin you will die in that state it is eternal in hellfire for you this is the reality there is a hell my friend and waiting on the other side <laughs> if you deny jesus christ today you need to be part depart from your sin or otherwise you're accountable forever uh, hell happen you sin if you ever committed Or it's fear it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God it's a fearful thing that you that you that's why he's commanding you to repent of your sin and turn from turn to him and you repent all your sin or, or else you all likewise will perish today you need a savior in Jesus Christ repent de ye therefore and be converted that your sin might be blotted out that at the time of refreshing shall come in the presence of the lord in matthew 11 28 to 30 lord jesus christ says come to me all you who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you 
and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest and for your soul and my yoke is easy and my burden is light the Bible says whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved call upon the name of the Lord and if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has risen him from the dead now you shall be saved the Bible says there is only one God one mediator between God and man that's the man Christ Jesus to be saved from his sin Jesus says you must be born again because there is no other way he said I am the way I am the truth I am the life no one come can come to the father except through me God commands his love toward us while we were yet sinners Christ died for us but Jesus Christ humbled himself to the point that he came and lived as a man he was born of a virgin lived a holy and perfect and sinless life over 30 years had a ministry that lasted for about three years he performed miracles and signs and wonders that tested who he he was even god spoke about him from heaven during the years of his ministry to attest to the fact that he is the son that he, he is, we should hear him and that he was well pleased with him the same jesus christ suffered in the hands of the sinner not much different than many of you he suffered in the hands of sinners and they allowed them to beat him to bruise him to crucify him to put him to death on the cross he could have call have called a legions of all avengers to deliver him from this he didn't have to die he had to die on the cross for you and for me but he did it on his own free choice because he cares for you enough to want you to be saved he wants you to have a forgiveness of sin and cleansings of sin and reconciliation to the father the bible says in isaiah 53 5 that christ was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquity the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his tribe we are healed today we need a savior that is jesus christ in him alone the grace uh, are you saved through faith and not of of yourself that is a gift of god it is not of works that any man should boast it is all the graces of god unmerited faith <laughs> and none of us would deserve that that merit that favor the bible says that god commands all men everywhere to repent because there is coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness <laughs> and so many people just are not ready they are not ready to stand before god are you ready to stand before god today if you god were to dem demand you of your life today would you be ready or most of you would not be if you are having sex outside of marriage and getting drunk or lying or stealing or looking at pornography or engaging in in homosexuality in fact that you are not ready to stand before god and give an account i hope you give up your sin i hope that you you will go and sin no boat no more like jesus said the bible says adulterers and adulteresses do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with god whoever therefore is a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of god are you a friend of god or a, or a friend of the devil are you a slave to sin or are you a slave to righteousness the only two ways that you can be you need to follow jesus christ jesus christ will lead you in holiness jesus christ will lead you to obedience and will lead you according to the holy spirit 
and Jesus Christ never leads you to destruction but Jesus Christ leads you to life the Bible says God is hung is angry with the wicked every day please folks stop start being holy and live for Jesus Christ Jesus Christ commands you to repent or you are going to perish the Bible says repent therefore and be converted that your sin might be blotted out that that time will refresh and come will come from the God's presence repent and be converted means to be born again unless that is the only way is the only way you can get your sin blotted out and forgiven do not fall for this lie all you have to do is to believe and you are okay with God no God commands your holiness God commands repentance there's many professing Christians today these days they uh, say they are Christian because they say they pray the sinner's prayer they ask Jesus uh, in their heart they will attend a certain ch church but the Bible says if you love Jesus you live holy Jesus says if you love me you will keep my commandments the Apostle Paul wrote down 1 Corinthians chapter 6 the unrighteous will not rent the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God do not be deceived are you recognize your unrighteousness because the Bible makes it clear you are not going to inherit the kingdom of God if you forsake your sin and trust in Jesus you can can be forgiven from all you see Could introduce you the person who created that and he's a lot bigger than that yeah, that is God you know I, I'm, I'm from France and we don't have you know this kind of you're from France yeah, yeah. Oh, bonjour. Comment ça va? we don't have this Vous avez pas des, uh, no. <laughs> des pumpkins de cette grosse no, no, en France no, no? no. demandez à Dieu probablement il va vous en donner Lui, il est plus gros que ce que le. Euh, non, mais pour nous, c'est rigolo, quoi. C'est rigolo, oui. Euh... Comme ça, vous êtes de la France, vous êtes un touriste euh... Ou vous restez ici maintenant Non, je me promène, moi, je travaille, je voyage tout le temps. En fait. oh, ok. Voilà, j'aime bien. Ouais. <rire> ouais, du coup, c'est la première fois que je viens. Pendant Halloween, on va dire. Donc, c'est la ouais. première fois. Je vais voir la Halloween en Amérique du Nord en fait. Ouais, Et nous ouais. on le fait pas comme ça. Donc non, vous fêtez vraiment... pas l'Halloween Pas trop, non. Non, ben, je vous blâme pas parce que moi je trouve que c'est un peu, euh, un peu euh, trop sévère, trop dangereux. Ouais, ça, oui. ça, ça montre trop de, 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 de mauvaises choses comme des personnes qui se font tuer ou du monde ouais, qui sont ouais, enterrés. Euh, c'est morbide, ouais, tu sais. Ouais. Alors moi je suis pas trop trop d'accord avec ça. D'accord. Ouais, je comprends les points de vue. Euh, en tout cas, c'est marrant pour nous, c'est rigolo. Ouais. <rire> Comment vous appelez Vous êtes Quel est votre nom Moi c'est Marie. Marie. Enchantée. Ah, mon nom c'est Jean-Pierre. Jean-Pierre, enchanté. Ouais. Jean-Pierre. Je peux vous donner quelque chose si vous oui, voulez bien lire. C'est en anglais, vous pouvez lire en Oui, bien sûr. Okay. Ouais, vous m'avez parlé en anglais comme si vous êtes bilingue. <rire> Est-ce que vous parlez plus que l'anglais et le français? Parce qu'en France, vous êtes tellement entouré avec des différentes langues. C'est nul, moi, je sais. Vous, vous connaissez vous Déjà, le... français, anglais, c'est déjà pas mal. Oui. Justement, la langue anglaise, c'est internationale. Vous pouvez aller n'importe où avec la langue anglaise. Ah, c'est ça, oui, c'est ça. C'est bon. le partage, quoi. Bon, bonne okay, journée bonjour. à vous. Moi, je dois y aller. Je vais euh, passer une bonne journée à, au Canada et à Ottawa, la capitale du Canada. Bye-bye. Oh, oh, boy.
Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore is a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. And the Bible says, appoint a man once to die and after this comes the judgment. The Bible says in mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity and by the fear of the Lord, once depart from evil. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> on va voir Dieu un jour, on va tout mourir. Il va falloir qu'on fasse face. <laughs> I could introduce you the person who created that, which is a lot bigger than that pumpkin, and that is God. Everything you see around here, it's all created by Him. All the stuff that is all man-made buildings came from God, from the material that He created. With all that, we could not build anything. He also gave us the intelligence to know how to build these things. I am amazed at what He has created. I'm amazed about His creation, but I glorify the Creator, my Creator, your Creator, our Creator. Come to Christ, walk with Christ, think of Him every day, have a relationship with Him every day. Don't forget to say hello to Him in the morning and say good night. Offer all your thanks that you're still alive, breathing the, His oxygen. He's very patient with you. We don't know. It comes like a thief in the night. You could die today. You could die tomorrow. Make sure you're ready to face him on Judgment Day. I hope you are. We're all going to see him one day. He's our judge. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the King of Kings. And I was looking for it and I couldn't find it. Blessed are those who do the commandments, that they might have the right of the tree of life, and they might enter it through the, gate, the gate into the city, but outside are dogs and sexually immoral, and murderers and idolaters, and anyone who loves and practices a lie. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. You will find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Friends, do not be a friend of those that can kill the body, and after that no more they can do, but I will show you whom you should fear. Fear here, him who after he has killed has the power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. The Bible says, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor idolaters, adulterers, no homosexuals, no sodomites, no drunkards, will inherit the kingdom of God. Jesus said, except a man be born he, again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The Bible says, faith comes come by hearing and hearing by the Lord of God, by the word of God. By grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourself, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. But we are his workmanship, creating Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we walk in them. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. 
He that believes that Jesus is not condemned, but he who does not believe in him is condemned already. If you not believe in the only begotten Son of God, God does not take the light of the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn and live. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6, and having flu included, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and to many foolish and harmful lusts which drown man into destruction and perdition. But the Bible says he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will give his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake, and the lake would burn, burns in fire and brimstone, brimstone, which is the second death. I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. I know that you are gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundantly in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harms. The Bible says, little children, let no one deceive you. Who you will practice righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sin is of the devil, the devil has sinned from beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God has was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus Christ says, out of the mouth comes overflow the mouth. And God will wipe away every tears in their eyes. There shall be no more death, no sorrow, no crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. The Bible says, The fear of the Lord is the fountain of life. To turn one away from the snares of death. Pride before, goes before the pride. God opposes the proud and give grace to the humble. There is no other name given under heaven by which we must be saved except Jesus. The Bible says there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked, all things are open to the eyes of him to whom you must give an account. This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desire all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. But there is only one God, and there is only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. When we were still without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man would one die, Yet perhaps for a good man, someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, that while we are we're still sinners, Christ died for us. Isaiah 5.20, Woe unto those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. You need to repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sin might be blotted out, and times of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord.
I'm here at the uh, Byward Market again a different place usually this place is very crowded it's a nice day I guess during the week there's not as many people and they are during the weekend but here is where most people sell their goods or produce farmers they came here and got together from all over the city of Ottawa and in the country and they came and bring their fruits from their garden sold sold it here that's how they were making their living they don't seem to be doing that as much as they used to do because right here on this street it was crowded with a lot of different stalls of, of producing fruits and vegetable now and lots of restaurants lots of cafe grass people eat outside today we're in the month of October it's the 6th of October I think it is let me check what date is it today yeah Wednesday October 6 2021 yeah it's nice and warm probably our Indian summer I don't know if it's right for me to say that might not be politically incorrect but this is what it's called an Indian summer I haven't heard anything different about it, so I guess it's okay for me to say it and say it in public and I don't think I'll be arrested or be condemned from saying it yeah it's a beautiful day a little bit some clouds yeah I'm here preaching the gospel not too many people stop by or talk or even read my what's written on my banner there's a lot of words from the Bible on the bat banner people are not interested I guess if they read it they won't even know where it came from and they probably wouldn't even believe it what it says but anyway there's nothing very offensive on my banner it's very very merciful signs that Jesus Christ has preached while he was here on earth and yet everybody just doing their own thing live their own life their life is more important than anything else that's sad it's very sad to see that that people don't care they don't even care about God all they think is themselves people wearing masks afraid of dying and yet they're not a uh, think about their soul they're more afraid about their health physical health but they're not too concerned about their soul's health I think they should wear a mask on their soul against sin to repel against sin that's what they should do anyway we're all gonna die one day anyway and no matter how much you wear a mask to try to save you from getting the COVID-19 you will not stop it you'll never be able to stop because if God decides to die on a certain date you have an appointment to die on that day. There's nothing you can do about it. Like me, I don't wear a mask. I only wear when I go in, in stores because it's the law. But I, outside, I don't wear it like some people do. <laughs> and I don't, I'm not afraid about it because I trust in God. I believe more in Him than I would believe in the vaccine. He gave me a very good system, an immune system that would, would be a lot better than a vaccine. And if he wants me to die, well, that's his will. That's his, that's his choice. It was my time to go. No matter how much I wore the mask, it wouldn't have saved me anymore. If I'm going to die on December 11, 19, 2021, well, I am going to die. There's nothing I can do. 
I could wear as long as I as much as I want the mask, but that's not gonna help me. God is the one who decides when you're gonna die. He also decides when you're gonna be born, when you're gonna be created. He created all of us in his image. And here we have people now think they are God. They are the one to decide who should live and should who should die. They even kill babies in mother's womb. They even kill old people who are sick. As if it's us we, who decide who should live and who should die. We have no authority whatsoever. We're under the wrath of God for what we're doing. Imagine that killing from the beginning of conception until the end. From the cradle to the grave. Man seem to think they have the authority to do whatever they want to do. Well, we are going to regret it for those days. He's coming back soon, folks. He might be sooner than we think. Because we're almost at the end of time. The sign is starting to show about what the Bible has predicted. There's many prediction that the Bible has fulfilled. 80% of, of it has been fulfilled to the letter. There's 20 more coming. So if I could believe the 80% came up to the letter, why would not believe that 20 is going to come as well? And I read the Bible, and here a lot of people think that the Bible is man-made, written by man. But I say it is not written just by holy man. They were inspired by God. Because whatever it says it did, in it, it really is happening now. You know, in the Bible, as an example, at, toward the end of days, people will be lovers of coal. They will scoff and mock about anybody who's out there preaching the gospel. And you see that happening. Isn't that not a good proof? Also, Jesus said, if you speak my name, they will hate you. Don't worry, because they hated me first and I overcome it. Yes, people, when they see me with this banner on here, I'm sure they hate me. If I preach louder, they will tell me to shut up. Anyway, I'm, don't worry about what they think of me. I don't care what people think of me. What I care is what God thinks of me. If he thinks, if he sees me, what I'm doing pleases him, that's good enough for me. If it displeases people who are walking by me, I couldn't care less. They're the one who's going to regret it. They would wish that they would hear my words, or they wish they would have read my banner and stop for a moment and talk with me and learn a bit more about God. They came so close to be converted, and yet they refuse it. When they'll be finding themselves being sent to hell, they are going to cry like crazy. They're going to beg for mercy. How awful for that day for those people that God will say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Oh, I put myself in their shoes. I don't want to go there. I wouldn't want to go there. And that's why I'm here. I don't want anybody to see to be there also. That's why I'm here. I love my neighbor. I wish they could see what I see and what I've read in the Bible. The problem with this world, people don't read the Bible. If they would read the Bible, they would see exactly what it says. They will be shocked. It's not what the Bible says, folks. It's not just believing in Him. You have to do some works as well. You've got to obey all His commandments. And that means to stop sinning completely. This idea about one save, always save, is a lie. It's dangerous to teach that to, to, to people because they'll, they'll send them all to hell. It's a lie. It's not true. It is done by the, it comes directly from the pit of hell of Satan. Put that in people's mind that one save, always lay, always save. Unbelievable. God bless you, sir. Uh, well, I'm here to try to warn the people to get themselves ready. Because most people are walking by here are not ready. They're all blind. They're walking like zombies. 
You're walking toward the cliff, a steep cliff of death. Yeah, people probably would think that I'm preaching hate. Actually, they're probably half right. I'll preach them to hate Satan and to hate your sin, but to love God and your neighbors. People who says that I'm preaching hate, they don't know what love is all about. Tough love is the one that we need in this world. It's not enough, people. We need to be slapped by the Bible. The Bible should slap them to wake them up. Praise the Lord. Believe in Jesus. Walk with Jesus. Come to Christ. Christ created that big pumpkin. And he's a lot bigger than that pumpkin. I'll introduce you who he is, who did it. God our Savior created you as well. He created that for sure. Yes, he sure did. If only he was here, we could take a picture of him. He's here right now. He's right there. Well, keep him in there. Are you born again? Believe in Jesus Christ, the Lord. He's our Savior. He died for us, for our sins. One thing for sure, yes, we do have to believe in Him, but it's not just believing Him. We have to obey His commandment. Stop sinning, too. We mustn't sin. We must live holy gotta be born again yes we are all right god bless you woman god bless you eternity he's yes. coming back soon yes spread the gospel i do i good. do i try good. when i can all right good nice to see god bless you god bless you. <laughs> i'm gonna soon go you too, ma'am. Have a good day. God bless you. Spread the good words. Speak to, about God to your friends and family members. He's alive. He died on a cross for us so we can be saved from our sins. Don't forget what he's done for us. What an amazing God we have in Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The sweetest name I ever known. Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeah, that's music in my ears. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. The Judge of Judges. The Savior. Our Redeemer. Our Advocate. Our Mediator. He's all of those. He's the Bread of Life. Eat His Bread drinks his water speaking of eating food don't forget to say grace every time you have your meal at the table uh, in front of you uh, on your table either for breakfast for lunch or for supper say grace and offer your thanks for all the food you have and say thank you that you haven't gone or you have the opportunity to be able to still buy your food and still that he still gives us our four seasons thank God God that you're still giving us food for us because you can take that away from us but it will come one day I'm afraid to say that the future is not very bright it's gonna get worse we think this coronavirus is terrible this is nothing this is only a cake and a perk What's coming is, there's a man called the Antichrist is coming. He's coming before Jesus Christ. He has to be revealed first and he has to live for seven years. He will control the whole world for seven years. And half of the seven year, which is three and a half years, he will turn around 
and force people to uh, worship him because he's consider himself as God and he's gonna force us to wear the number of the beast and if you don't wear that number of the beast you will not be able to buy or sell anything you wouldn't even be able to work isn't that what's happening right now with this COVID-19 it seems like it's a forecast it's what's coming right now they're forcing us to take the vaccine and also they're forcing us to have in the a proof that we taken our the two uh, doses of, of the vaccine because we can't go into restaurants anymore isn't that a foreshadow of what's coming of the antichrist like you won't be able to buy food if you don't have that number and christians like me i'm not supposed to take that if i take that number i'm going i'm i'm condemned yes it's going to be terrible for christians on that day also for non-christians as well it's not going to be easy and when the time is over for the antichrist that's when jesus christ comes he will come in the cloud he will raise those who are dead in, in christ and us who are still alive we will all be caught up in heaven into the cloud and that's when he's going to pour down his wrath on his enemies and he will separate the sheep and the goat will be up there in heaven and that's only will happen after the seven year tribulation those who believe in the pre-trib are not right uh, it's not written that, that is definitely not written in the bible nowhere in the bible says that the bible says it happens only after the seven year tribulation jesus christ coming back after that period of time and when he comes down in jerusalem and he'll step his foot on the on the garden of olive or gethsemane on the hill of gethsemane i think i got that right and he will reign for a thousand years he will reign on this earth for a thousand years where there will be peace finally we will have peace do you want peace make sure you if you want to stay with god be ready on that day be ready it's time now to start believing in him because when that time comes it'll be too late do it now prepare yourself get yourself ready i implore you i'm warning you to do that right now don't wait when it's too late today is salvation not tomorrow anyway father thank you very much for giving me this opportunity just free to, to preach the good news of the gospel of jesus christ oh father all these people out here how many are saved how many are going to make it to heaven how many are right with you all these people have if all these people have passed by me and they're all saved or all condemned they're all condemned oh this is awful that's shocking and I guess it's true what you said in the Bible, Jesus. Many people take the wide road of destruction. Very few take the narrow road to salvation and to righteousness. Yes, that is true. And I see it. That's another thing that the Bible has said in the Bible. And here people think that the Bible was written by a man only. Jesus knew what he was talking about many many are called but many many are called but few are chosen yes many are lost will be lost will end up in hell and jesus said that he predicted that so why don't you guys believe it i would say there's about uh, 80 to 85 percent of the world populations are heading straight to hell that is a shocking statement. The rest are my, I say. Anyway, God, thank you for all the blessings I received for you, from you. Hopefully, Father, that 
the words I've been preaching here will not go void. I know they will not go void. I, if they haven't got into people's ears here, I hope they will go somewhere in somebody else's ears. There's other street preacher out there are preaching. Let their words sink in to those people who are walking by them. And I haven't done it successfully yet. Hopefully, they will be done and be successful to those people throughout the whole world. Anyway, God bless you all, everybody here. Come to Christ. Believe in Jesus Christ. He's your Savior. God bless you. Amen.